So uh, we're here for another episode of Everyday People. <laughs> Dizzle, Rick With the D. shiny baldy. He definitely got it cleaned up. <laughs> Mike, forgive me, I need to see you at least today or tomorrow. So oh, Mike yeah. is my barber. Yeah. Okay, okay. And much love to him. We're gonna you get him. Chris, though. What are you talking about? He tell me I'm crispy, but he, he know I'm wolf. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> we full wolf right now. So. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, you, you brought us a product. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, please share with us, you know, the benefits from it. What is it? So, in the mornings, I like to start off with something uh, hot, other than my girlfriend. Shout out. Uh, so, I like to drink tea. Okay. Tea is phenomenal. Uh, this is a uh, natural tea. It's caffeine-free. No caffeine enters this temple. Okay? Understood. Only natural energy. Now, uh, this is a, again, I, mean, I always say this wrong. Some people say it's uh, Roybus, Roybus, whatever, I don't know. It's a Roybus blend with some vanilla bean in it, okay? And it's from Af- it's from the African Roybus herb, so it's an African tea, okay. uh, the Republic. Wow. So, you know, in the morning time, I like to, you know, get the hot water. It's a whole ritual. Um, get it going, get it to about 212 degrees, let it cool down a little bit. Then I put the tea bag in there, let that steep for a while. He said 212 degrees. Very specific. <laughs> very specific. I'm going to continue. Bro. I'm going to continue. <laughs> yeah, put that the bag in there, let that steep for a second. And then I'll put the agave in there. Okay? Either agave or maple syrup. But because um, of refrigeration uh, purposes, I like to use the agave while I'm here. Okay. If I'm at home and I make it, it's maple syrup. Okay. If I'm at work and I make it, it's agave. So you, you can make a, a for either or. Correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but again, I feel great from this. But most people think herbal tea, they think of going to sleep. I'm like, no, this puts me in a good steady state for the day. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Um, so it feels like the plane lifts and th- then you can yeah. stay like this. There you go. It's like, it's like I'm already here. It'll lift a little bit and then I'll stay. You know what I'm saying? I think what happens is most people, they're here and they want to go here. But not only the, what they got to remember is when you go here, you don't go here. <laughs> that last part, bro. You know, again, this is granted I've gotten proper sleep and so on and so forth. The last time, you know, you caught me in here. I was <laughs> he was not, he was not no, yeah. yeah, he was struggling. But yeah, you know I, was, what? I was struggling, but that, you know, that's because I didn't get proper sleep, you know. And sometimes, you know, versus, uh, let's say, a cup of coffee or some type of, uh, energy shot, right? You just need a nap. And today's episode is talking about uh, recovery and yeah. inactive recovery. So this is great that you, know, you bring us exactly. a product that helps us to stay uh, consistent, at least, right? Absolutely. So yeah, get you a red African vanilla rooibos. It's delicious. You can order it online, or you can get it from a local grocery store. I'm not going to say where I got it until they start paying you, boy. But it's delicious. More facts. <laughs> More facts. <laughs> Losing and gaining control of your sleep rhythm. How does your body know when it's time to sleep? Why do you suffer from jet lag after arriving in a new time zone? How do you overcome jet lag? Why does that acclimatization cause you yet more jet lag upon returning home? Tone in to combat these I was issues. Just thinking because it, Why it, and how? You don't want them sitting here lit watching us listen to it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I would have it just on the screen. It's like it would say while we sleep instead of like looking at us. Got you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It had that. Okay. (laughs) So we'll save us. We're like, like, what is going on? All right. Cool. He said, "Cover us up, Rick. I got you, bro. You got it. You already got it figured (laughs) out." You know, I had part of it, but now help me. (laughs) Are you ready? Yeah. I go. Does a cup of coffee keep you awake? Perhaps most importantly. How do you know if you're getting enough sleep? There are two main factors that determine when you want to sleep and when you want to be awake. As you hear these very words, both factors are powerfully influencing your mind and body. The first factor is a signal beamed out from your internal 24-hour clock located deep within your brain. The clock creates a cycling, day-night rhythm that makes you feel tired or alert at regular times of night and day, respectively. The second factor is a chemical substance that builds up in your brain and creates a sleep pressure. The longer you've been awake, the more that chemical sleep sleep pressure pressure. accumulates, and consequently, the sleepier you feel. It is the balance between these two factors that dictates how alert and attentive you are during the day. 
when you will feel tired and ready for bed at night, and in part, how well you will sleep. Got rhythm. Central to so basically, he's about to jump into that circadian rhythm, but he gave us all of that information to show us like there's a chemical substance that goes on in our brain, mm -hmm. and as it increases, that's creating pressure to sleep, mm. and by inhibiting that pressure to sleep, you know, we're offsetting our rhythm, I think. 100%. So, um, what he's about to drop into now, we'll, after that, we'll go ahead and rap about it and then go ahead, all right? Any of the questions in the opening paragraph is the powerful sculpting force of your 24-hour rhythm, also known as your circadian rhythm. Everyone generates a circadian rhythm, circa meaning around, and dian, derivative of dian, meaning day. Indeed, Every living creature on the planet with a lifespan of more than several days generates this natural cycle. The internal 24-hour clock within your brain communicates its daily circadian rhythm signal to every other region of your brain and every organ in your body. Your 24-hour tempo helps to determine when you want to be awake and when you want to be asleep. But it controls other rhythmic patterns too. These include your timed preferences for eating and drinking, your moods and emotions, the amount of urine you produce, your core body temperature, your metabolic rate, and the release of numerous hormones. It is no coincidence that the likelihood of breaking an Olympic record has been clearly tied to time of day, being maximal at the natural peak of the human circadian rhythm in the early afternoon. Even the timing of births and deaths demonstrates circadian rhythmicity due to the marked swings in key light-dependent metabolic, cardiovascular, temperature, and hormonal processes that this pacemaker controls. So you guys got to hear a little bit about the circadian rhythm and why it's important. So we're here to talk about regeneration, mm. but regeneration talking about inactive where you're sleeping. And um, the circadian rhythm that we're addressing now is that we're trying to keep our timeline correct with the day, mm -hmm. right? Every day is a cycle. So uh, how, are we, how are we keeping our rhythm intact? is where we're driving at. So um, how many hours of sleep do you get? And are you aware of your circadian rhythm? Um, so I'm very aware of the circadian rhythm, but you know, living in this modern day society and right. you know, choosing to do what I do, because it's my choice, um, I, I ignore it, right? So, and I think we forget that this is our choice. You know what I'm saying? Right. I ignore it. I remember hearing Dick Gregory talk about this a while ago. He always dropping jewels. He it's a legend like, if y'all don't know. Yeah, rest rest of his soul. Yeah. But he was talking about when you're, you're supposed to go to sleep when the sun go down. Wind down when the sun go down and then you wake up when the sun rise. Right. So in the wintertime, the sun goes down earlier, right? If you think about what happens in the wintertime, there's less food, there's, uh, you know, less foraging that needs to be done. So you need to conserve all your energy. That's why you sleep. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and you, wake up and you go get the little the little resources that you do have and even the winter time in like tropical areas still produces maybe a little bit less it still has a probably an abundance of things sure but it still produces a little bit less seasons you know seasons yes so these are the seasons that you are supposed to wind down right so you can be recharged for the next season but again, you know, this is a new season for us. Yeah, right now, October. Yeah, but again, we you know again we choose to ignore these things. We choose to ignore our circadian rhythm. Like, oh, I'm tired. Now I'm gonna drink some coffee. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm tired. I don't need no rest. I need to. I need to grind. It's like, nah, man. You, you, so we're gonna help <laughs> you reframe and choose to do the yeah. right thing. Choose yeah. to get sleep. Choose you know? to treat your body right. Choose yeah. to stay in rhythm. Sleep is. It's funny because the other day I was just I was saying. Um, you know, you heard the MOB phrase, money over, and I was like, SOE, sleep over everything. <laughs> yeah, you know what we're saying? <laughs> Look, yeah, uh, we see it on the show. Again, yeah, yeah. give you credit for that? Nah, Any, uh, again, it's funny because it, I'm sure that anybody who's super successful will watch this and be like, yeah, that's why you broke. I'm like, yeah, but I'm healthy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I get crazy. it. They're yeah. saying that you have to uh, let go of sleep in order to be rich. Yeah, that's or, that, that's false. You know saying, I, I, like, think, I think that's false because your money can work for you. Hundred percent. And you don't need to lose sleep that your money's working for you. 
Yeah. You lose sleep because you got to work for you all the time. Yeah. The second that you make an investment and then that investment comes back and bring you about $300 and you put a thousand in mm. and then you do that again, that money start working for you. And then you give, you know what? I could buy this extra hour of time. Everybody's complaining they don't have no time, no time to train. Well, we need to start making investments, right? If you mm -hmm. have an idea, bring that to the market. We're in America. Yeah. Joe Biden said that we're, uh, a country based on an idea. You like Biden, don't you? I like that. <laughs> I like that he stays to the core of what excellence looks like. Okay. I haven't seen a since Trump. Yeah. I haven't seen America have to have that that revival of this is what a president should feel like. Someone mm. that speaks with decorum. Yes, he stutters. Yeah, he, you call him sleepy and all that. Like I just don't know where he at most of the time. <laughs> They, they caught they caught they caught him look like he's about to do a heavy move yeah, too. I was like, "Cuz don't know where he at half the time." I'm telling you, <laughs> but I'm seeing that I'm like, "Yo, is this is the leader of the nation?" He walking on stage like, "Bro, you about to walk into some bushes? What did you do? <laughs> Shaking people's hands who's not even there? Like, it is insane. I get it if you're like a congressman or." You know, state secretary or something like that. We're laughing right now, but if we zoom in time and you're yeah. 80, 80, what, five years old you? Yeah, I'm not going to be the president, though. <laughs> of course I'm going to be delusional, possibly, if I don't take care of myself. I think you'll be cracking a lot of jokes but yeah. at young folks. Yeah, but yeah. But that but, rhyme for a reason, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this dude, bro, I, if but, I get that delusional, I, I don't want to be interacting delusional. with people. He's not delusional. How about this? Look, there's certain things he's that... He's not delusional. <laughs> I don't even follow politics, right? I don't even follow politics, but I do look at people. And if you're shaking the hand of somebody who's not even there, yeah, go, you need to go sit in a rocking chair. All right, bro. how about this? Then? You go sit in a rocking chair, man. Go home, man. Go take a nap. Get your circadian rhythm back. Maybe you'll come back, and then you'll be able to fully be aware of what's going on around you. Yeah, Joe, I, I still need your help, Joe, so I'm not going to... Yeah, because you better get that student loan. <laughs> yeah, Joe, listen, man, listen, listen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> My point, man, let's get back to the rhythm. Let's get back to the rhythm. <laughs> this is the rhythm of the night. It's a good song, by the way. <laughs> it really is, though. Yeah, it's a good song. Yeah, it's a good song. Yo, you clean. That's clean. Both references. Uh, I'm in true tears right now, yo. Well, you were saying something about the circadian rhythm and then uh, moving into. You started talking about Biden, and I was like, oh, man, this dude <laughs> talking about Biden. Yeah, we did get off the track. I, I was like, you like Biden. Um, I do, man. It's because, you know, he is bringing a message that is clean as opposed to what Trump is, the election. Ah. Uh, and he's like. See, I, see, I wish I could. I'm not saying I'm on anybody's side here, but I wish I could knew much more about politics. But how about this? If so we I, have a vote, right? Yeah. And let's say 10 people voted and say, like, I should be president, right? Yeah. And then you like, no, nah, I don't believe that the results No, no, I that. get that portion of it. I'm talking about, you know, again, I'm not defending anybody, but I always hear everybody bashing a certain person mm -hmm. because of certain things, right? Just like me bashing Biden. Oops. Just like me bad, b bashing Biden right now. It's yeah, he's, he's old delusional, but maybe when he's rational, he has some good things to say. Thank you. That's what maybe I'm when he's that. rational, he has some good policies My to put in place. Do you think he's 50-50 delusional, 50% rational? Or I he think like he's like 75% delusional, 25% rational. Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's devastating. That's just how, I, again. He's leading this country. He's talking to all the leaders across the world. He, he yeah, can't he's talking to all of them. Did he meet with Putin? Bro. He has like at least fifty countries all together. Sorry, eighty countries. But like I said, I don't know enough about politics. Remember, just, what I told you that that's yeah. the precursor. I'm just telling you, it's not eighty countries are all together saying, "Let's help Ukraine," so okay. it don't have to be a stress on us. Okay. So the reason why the gases are, are are up is because the Republicans are trying to have this. I know. <laughs> don't get me started on that. They no no, but they truly actually are trying to like stop the uh, make us default. So basically, like, how about this? If you pay a bill, right, and you say, you know what, I'm, I'm done paying this bill for a little bit because I don't have the money for it. Yeah. You're still going to get them charges. Yeah, they're going to cut your shit off. And they cut off so much stuff. Yeah. If, if they let that go, yeah. they'll cut off so much stuff. So they're not going to jump into too much more politics. But, but here's the thing with this. All I'm going to tell you is this. Country, like, like Captain America said this in 
uh, what was it, Avengers or one of them? He was like, countries are ran by men, and men have agendas. And you and again, I hate to reference a, a fictional movie, but, but that's so the, true. It's so timely. Yeah. Like they've got agendas, and again, we don't know the hidden agendas of all these folks. We still got to remember, right? And I'm getting a little bit conspiracy on you, but these are the same people, okay? who lied, who stole from the indigenous people of this land. I mean, like... We, we can't... So are talking about 1600s, right? A hundred percent. So 1600s... That, that same legacy is not gone. It's not gone. You got to remember, they still sit in these beautiful, large mansions that have been around their family since the 1600s. They still sit in these private clubs that have been around since... The 1600s. You're talking about the MAGA Repo- the MAGA Republic. I'm talking about all of these people, bro. Not like, all, all of them. Not, not all of bro, them. Bro, this yeah. is again. You gotta remember, this is a like we just hugged a few people just now, like as we walked up in here. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, I love people. Don't get me wrong. I just don't. I love everybody. I just don't trust everybody. That's also fair. You see? Me? You yeah. feel me? Mm-hmm. So again, when these people put on a show for us, and that's all they're doing with these with the news, they're just putting on a show for us so we can feel. Some type of way, so we can be distracted from the re- the reality of what's going on. Now, what's the real things that's going on? I don't know, but I also know that a lot of the times when there's some huge scandal in the news, there's something very important going on behind those scenes. Absolutely, it's a fucking magic trick, bro. Absolutely. So I only say I had to say that's fact. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I only say I had to say uh, that maybe you know Biden being delusional is a is a is a is a, a ploy, or maybe it's you know really he delusional. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I know uh, your boy Trump had a lot of black friends. I don't know where they went. Um, he had no friends. He didn't have no black friends? No. You see how much he helped Mike Tyson out? Was that really him helping? Did you see it, though? I'm not defending him. I'm just saying. He used to be friends with Russell Simmons, when, when my, Mike, my, Mike Tyson. My homies came to me and said, wait, Trump let Lil Wayne out of jail. I was like... What I I, I, I'm what saying, I don't know. All I know is what the media shows me, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, cool. Maybe this is true. Maybe it isn't. But I also know that uh, if but you want to Does he really have our best interest in heart? I don't know. You know? I'd say this much to you. Why is it that the Emmett Till bill, the lynch, anti-lynching bill... That just went through. Why? And he got, he got killed in like 1955. Yeah. So when you had the anti-Asian uh, hate act, yeah. That bill got in way before the anti-lynching bill. Why? Because Asians can do more than blacks can possibly. And as I'm saying to you, like if and again, all, I'm not all, saying those, that's those the truth. So many, so many presidents, yeah. to pass that anti-lynching bill, but then Joe Biden comes, he passes that bill for the mm-hmm. anti-Asian act, right? A- anti yeah. uh, hate act. Yeah. And then he gets the anti-lynching bill. Same president does that, but no other presidents before that can pass that anti-lynching bill. So he had to slip that one in in order to get ours. Yeah. That's that's but, pre- a thank you. I, I mean... That's a thank you right there. Because now, like, they can't lynch us now. Thank God. Like, uh, why, why we had to wait this long to say thank but you? But there's also... It's like this. There also should have been certain laws in place before that. Like, you know, it, whether it's lynching or not, you're still harming another person. So there's got to be other laws, statute of, of some type of law to be like, yo, you can't do that. Whether it's a lynch or whether it's a you know um, act of violence or whatever it is, I'm not justifying. Be ready, ready for that, I'm, right? not, I'm not justifying but anything. If you don't look at an individual as being like uh, he, he accounts. Like if you look at us, like they look at us like three fifths of a human being. Mm. We're missing free will and intelligence. But if you want to take mean, it, like we're considered like chattel. What, but what pre- Joe Biden said, and I saw this. He said, "If you don't vote for me, you're not black." I know. Who says that, bro? <laughs> He was wrong to say that. I'm like, he but, got real cavalier. But I'm sure. like, yo, man, I don't trust none of y'all. He was real cavalier. I don't that. trust none what, of y'all. You know what he said that on? Wait, with B- Sha- T- Charlemagne, the God, and oh, um, God. DJ Envy, and I think Angela Yee was there at the time. It's funny because they just, I just saw an interview with, uh, they was confronting Charlemagne, and they was like, yeah, man, you signed that contract. And he was like, you got sweaty. <laughs> you got <laughs> sweaty. You're talking, you're talking about signing, con- signing his soul over, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he got real sweaty and he was nervous. He's like, yeah, we were talking about that. Called him out on that. Yeah, well, good. Yeah, and I was like, oh dang. Anyways, yeah. but uh, circadian rhythm. Yeah, circadian <laughs> rhythm. We edit all that shit out. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>
to be honest with you, they need to at least feel that from us as well. Like it don't have to just be on the the body. Yeah. There is things going on outside of our body that we can have conversation on. And these so. things throw up our circadian rhythm. For fact based information, or what most of us think of as stage of sleep, light and REM sleep, deep and REM sleep, and REM sleep offer different brain benefits at different times of the night. Losing out on any one of these types of sleep will cause brain impairment. Of the many advantages conferred by sleep on the brain, that of memory is especially impressive and particularly well understood. Sleep has proven itself time and again as a memory aid, both before learning, to prepare your brain for initially making new memories, and after learning, to cement those memories and prevent forgetting. Sleep. Sleep. Sleep the night before learning. Sleep before learning refreshes our ability to initially make new memories. So it's funny because what we try to do is we try to mask the things from a a lack of something else. For example, mm. we can easily have good memory if we just got more sleep. We can easily have more energy if we just got more sleep. But instead we use additional supplements, right? And not to say they're not beneficial because uh, like a mushroom supplement will be good just for brain health, right? Um, instead of using a coffee, now you can just use cacao. Instead of using a coffee, now you can just use a mushroom supplement. I see you going, man. You see what I'm saying? Wow. Because this is the good things that we would need in, you know, in addition to good rest. Yeah. This, so, is, this is public health. Yeah. What you're, what you're doing right now. This yeah. is public information. Like they need to know that we should sleep. And he says it in A hundred percent. Because now if you don't get enough sleep, now you really need to go above and beyond. Now you need the sugary beverages. Now you need the other things that help you get the energy. You know what I'm wow. saying? Because you're not getting sleep anyways. No, but seriously, like this is good. We should cut in like this. And by the way, Matthew Walker, thank you for putting this book together. Thank you for the 17,000 studies mm. on sleep. 17,000 studies. That's a lot. Scrutinized. And he's been able to put all of this information together. I wonder if he's ever done any grounding sleep. He'll talk to you about it for sure. Matthew Walker. Yeah. Okay. You know what grounding sleep is, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Go on the ground. It does so each and every Dirt. night. Dirt. While we are awake, the brain is constantly acquiring and absorbing novel information, intentionally or otherwise. Passing memory opportunities are captured by specific parts of the brain. The fact-based information, or what most of us think of as textbook type. So... Really quick, this is crazy. Think about this. Everything you've ever seen, heard, smelled, tasted, everything you've ever experienced, our brains remember it, okay? There's another book called The Holographic Universe. The Holographic Universe, bro, you obviously- Amazing, also. right? But just like he was just saying, filters, right? So a lot of that information is useless to us in the sense of survival, like what we need. But there's a way you can tap into it. And they talk about it in a bit in the holograph. It's, it's, you can tap into that. Yeah, you can tap into it. You can go back to remember, I believe, all the way to your conception. Hello. Yo, I can remember up to 10 years old. Like, I remember that. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Precious day. Like, but everything. But Same. remember, everything that you ever experienced from being in a womb, there was a... There was a um, a, a study did, I don't know if it was a study or just like an experience that guy remembered everything that was going on when he was in the womb and he had no like um, medical terminology or whatever, but he was describing things and how things were functioning while he was in the womb to a doctor. And it was like, yeah, that's this, this, and this. Oh, that is doing like this because that's the where boom, boom, boom is happening. And he was describing it, you know, from a neophyte standpoint to a doctor who then was translating it into, you know, physician terms. But it was just crazy because he was able to tap into that. I mean, who's our they, creator? You got to get yeah, they, that. What do they call it? That's like... I think it's the, 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 the collective... I think it's the collective unconscious. The, the unconscious collective, I believe that's the name the of it. Unconscious collective. Like, everybody's experiences are... It's collected. Connected as well, too. And connected. And yeah, collected and connected. Oh, my God. It's, it, 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 I probably listened to this book... Like, Four or five times. I still keep learning stuff about it. Anyways, right. Learning, such as memorizing someone's name, a new phone number, or where you parked your car. A region of the brain called the hippocampus helps apprehend these passing experiences and binds their details together. Mm. A long finger shaped structure tucked deep on either side of your brain 
The hippocampus offers a short-term reservoir or temporary information store so like for accumulating new memories. Unfortunately, the hippocampus has a limited storage capacity, so almost like a camera similar. roll, or, to use a more modern-day analogy, a USB memory stick. Exceed its capacity, and you run the risk of not being able to add more information, or, equally bad, overwriting one memory with another, a mishap called interference forgetting. Mm. How, then, does the brain... Forgetting is called interference to the brain. We gave it the word forgetting. So the hippocampus is a part of the brain, yeah. right? It's a finger-like structure, he said. Yeah. So how, yeah. how, so he said it's like a USB, right? So I'm imagining the hippocampus finger-like structure sitting there, right? And then it gets filled up. Now, my guess is, to go with what I said earlier, everything is stored, it'll take that information from the hippocampus, download it into the brain, and go right back. But so you no, gotta like let but flush you, it but out. But you gotta flush it out through sleep, right? Sleep. You gotta let it download through sleep. And it files away like this. Yeah. Like this somebody like in USP, US, uh, UPS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like sorting it. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, it goes this way, it goes this way. <laughs> I was a sorter at UPS. I was. Um, me too. You were? I was a sorter at USPS, actually. USPS, okay. So we had these, uh, it was, I remember. <laughs> I'm going to hit you the year, too. Yeah, I re no, I'm just sorry, because this is where I met my brother, Steven, at. You know what I'm saying? Wow, okay. Uh, and we was in Kalamazoo, Michigan. We worked at the PNDC. <laughs> Kalamazoo. Yeah, PNDC, Processing and Distribution Center, right? Okay. For all the mail. And it was for different counties as well, too. We had maybe like... 12, I think it was 12 different counties we did it for. You know, Kalamazoo, like Westwood, um, you know, Portage, and a few other places. Right. right. But I think Battle Creek a little bit, too. I just named a few places. Yeah, he had to, though. He, uh, he but, went off you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they all had different machines. And we would flip the mail on these machines, sort it through the thing, and then it would just sort the addresses. And then it would, you know, it was it's, it's, it's insane the way people get their mail. Like, nobody understands these machines as far as like what it takes to get you your mail. Like what, just, what year was this if you can go back in time? You said you machine utilization yeah, and dude, like, I had to be man, I had to be at least at least twenty years ago. I was like twenty oh three. Yeah. Cause I'm yeah. telling you right now my experience was oh five. Yeah. I, I, that's I was, a, that's off the I can't remember specifically it had to be at least oh three to oh five. Oh ten or 10, something like okay. that. Yeah. I can't remember specifically but I remember, bro. That that job was fun. The only thing that sucked about it was third shift. Yeah, man. <laughs> I already know. But when you're young, you got that energy, bro. And I was thinking about that as I was driving here. Like McDonald's had like these cones next to it as I was driving. Yeah. And I was thinking, like, you know, they're open twenty four hours. That must mean how many shifts do they have? Is it three shifts mm. or is it four shifts? Because mm. you could break twenty four hour, six yeah. hour shift or eight hour shift. Right. And I was like, how many people do you need? And I was like, I'm thinking all business structure out of this. And I'm like, I'm just passing McDonald's. Good, yeah. Everybody else was like, I want fries, me. Yeah, I'm thinking like, all right, well, how do you structure this? Okay, and then they do this many people. How, what pay rate? And if you got a manager on staff, then you need this. And then you need anybody to supervise. And then after that, who's going who's gonna to call? Like, how do you pay the person on call? Like, all these small little simple things. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I got a fist bump on that because like, that's the thought process I was in. All of that. You have a maintenance staff. You know what I'm saying? Like to make right this function yeah. and it, it, it operates well like a well what do they spend on the, the garden do they have like a contractor who does all the McDonald's or do they have do you have to have a specific type of contractor who does each McDonald's or you know what I'm saying they have to go by the do they have to go to Hamburger University you know what I'm saying just to learn how to cut the grass like you know what I'm saying all like, of that's fact that and Chick-fil-A has that too to the yeah. to the T mm. I have real respect for Chick-fil-A yeah I, I got respect for all the businesses mm -hmm. I just don't respect what they're serving that too. <laughs> Deal with this memory capacity challenge. Some years ago, my research team wondered if sleep helped solve this storage problem by way of a file transfer mechanism. We, just we examined whether sleep shifted recently acquired memories to a more permanent, long-term storage location in the brain, thereby freeing up our short-term memory stores so that we awake with a refreshed ability for new learning. We began testing this theory using daytime naps. We recruited a group of healthy young adults and randomly divided them into a nap group and a no-nap group. At noon, all the participants underwent a rigorous session of learning. <laughs> no on nap. face name pairs, intended to tax the hippocampus, their short-term memory storage site. As expected, both groups performed at comparable levels. Soon after, 
the nap group took a 90-minute siesta in the sleep laboratory with electrodes placed on their heads to measure sleep. The no-nap group stayed awake in the laboratory and performed menial activities, such as browsing the internet or playing board games. Later that day, at 6 p.m., all participants performed another round of intensive learning where they tried to cram yet another set of new facts into their short-term storage reservoirs, another 100 face-name pairs. Our question was simple. Does the learning capacity of the human brain decline with continued time awake across the day? And, if so, can sleep reverse this saturation effect and thus restore learning ability? Saturation. Those who were awake throughout the day became progressively worse at learning, even though their ability to concentrate remained stable, determined by separate attention and response time tests. In contrast, those who napped did markedly better and actually improved in their capacity to memorize facts. The difference between the two groups at 6 p.m. was not small, a 20% learning advantage for those who slept. Having observed that sleep restores the brain's capacity for learning, making room for new memories, we went in search of exactly what it was about sleep that transacted the restoration benefit. Analyzing the electrical brainwaves of those in the nap group brought our answer. The memory refreshment was related to lighter, stage 2 NREM sleep, and specifically the short, powerful bursts of electrical activity called sleep spindles, noted in chapter 3. There's so much to unpack in that right there, but look what he said though, like, your sleep is changing so many things. So many things about you, so it's like your memory, mm -hmm. how you're gonna function the following day, um, because these guys are, had like short-term memory uh, affected by 20%. Can you imagine that? Like, so this this theory, like the rich guy told you, like, you know, sleeping in your dead or... <laughs> yeah. That's not the case. If you really want to survive and make it happen, take that siesta. Then, then, man, then I'll be thinking like, okay, they didn't sleep to get where they at, but do they sleep now? So I was trying to tell you <laughs> before, like, if they're... If they, found the point where their money can work for them yeah they're gonna get way more rest yeah that they're leading on and and the, you know this relates so much to and we haven't even related this to fitness yet you know we, this is just the ref effects on mind and mental productivity right, right. so yeah we had circadian rhythm and yeah. now the hippocampus yeah we're talking about memory now we're yeah talking. memory so this is just helping people understand you know the benefits of just the mental capacity you know, it's got ample amounts of benefits for physical as well, too. We haven't gotten into that yet, but mm. this is just, true. you know, you got to, like we just said earlier, like you said earlier, it get, it gets full and you got to download it into the long-term memory storage and then put it back and then and fill it up some more. And do like him, separate, sort it. Yeah, <laughs> sort it, you know what I'm saying? Sort it like the PNDC, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Kalamazoo, Michigan. My boy Steven, my brother Steven, we... Flipping that mail on them belts. Oh, Yo, no. I miss that. That's lit. I, I miss, if I could work that job at least two months out of the year. It'd be cool. Man, I, I, that's, it was so much fun. You know, the, the humility out of that, bro. I, I pray, I pray, <laughs> pray you get humility out of that. Too. Maybe one month. But it was just fun, bro. <laughs> Flipping the mail. And, and you go into a, again, you go into this like meditative state when you're so, you know, when something is like, Consuming you, right? Uh, it's just like a remedial task in a sense. Okay, you're just doing the same thing over. You're so yeah, you know. it's not really. We can listen to music while we're doing it. That's a menial task. Yeah, menial. Whatever. You don't. Yeah, you don't really need like to be thinking and interacting with people. And I'm like, yo, it's kind of good not to interact with people while working sometimes. Like it's it's pretty beneficial. <laughs> like, like this this woman I met yesterday, and I'm gonna finish on this piece. Yeah, book. she's like, Rick, I just want to be a soldier. I just wanted to get my job and go. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I love people who can honestly admit they don't want to be the one creating ideas. Right. If you got an idea that I can sink my teeth into, then I I'm a soldier with hundred percent. They know their roles. And that's why I like I was like I said on the drive here, I'm like, imagine if I had a bunch of soldiers like that on my team. You know, we would be unstoppable. Be unstoppable. Because I got bro. the ideas, bro. It's just a matter of like how am I executing them? And this is why I was telling my other homie, I'm like he said, yo, Rick, it's hard to make it on your own. I'm like, damn right it yeah. is. Yeah. Because if you had an assistant that you was paying $1,000 a week, she'd know for a fact 4000 is coming from yeah. you. Yeah. Or he's getting 4000 from you. He's going to invest his life into your company. 100%. 
even if you pay someone five hundred dollars a week. You pay them something that they won't be they gonna be happy with. They gonna yeah. they gonna take with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was grateful to do those twenty hours. <laughs> yeah. Five hundred. That's it. Yeah. That Rick. Think about this too, though, right? When you watch a movie, you probably think about a few of the actors, right? The director. Mm -hmm. But then when you, at the end, you see the credits. Hello. 13 minutes of credits of names. Like that movie would not have been possible without all those names. All of those. Wow. You know? Can we give all y'all respect? Yeah, all of them get much respect. But that's how important it is to have a team. You can't just make the movie with the, the couple of actors and the director. Nah, man. You need a team. A team. <laughs> and y'all been watching this. I've been guerrilla styling this my shit yeah. myself. But once we get a team, y'all gonna see us go level. Level yeah. up with it. Mics are on. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all seen these love of your mics right now. <laughs> this dude's hilarious. The, the level of humility has got to come out of at some point. Because you, you told him, like, we got to share our, our background, too. 100%. So, yeah. Um, we're going to do that one day. All right. So uh, we're here for the last segment. We talk about sleep. Well, Matthew Walker talked about sleep. Yeah, we listen. And why we sleep. We yeah. listen. Right. But, you know, um, but this last piece for our recovery yeah. with this inactivity is going to be with sound bath. Yes. I feel like it's a low level amount of activity that you need to just be you just need to be there. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't think you oh, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> so you just gotta just be just be present. Yeah. And um, you know, B Dizzle has done a sound bath and he wants to share his experience he, since he's yeah. never done it on camera. Right. So, so yeah, like you said, I I've, I've done one, I've never even, you know, talked about it on camera, but I have spoken with it vaguely with a few other people, but it's this beautiful ceremony of um, cacao. Are you familiar with what cacao is? Where all the chocolate comes from. Yeah. But the raw pot of it. And, you know, it's very ancient in certain civilizations, or sacred, excuse me, in certain civilizations. And they really, because um, chocolate was very sacred in a lot of civilizations too in the, in the, in the raw form. Anyway. So he's in South, South America. South America, yes, yes, yes. And yeah, so they have a ceremony this girl put together right over here in Malibu. You know, of course, it's some Malibu stuff. <laughs> he, he, he's so bougie. <laughs> so, bougie. so Malibu. Yeah. But it was beautiful, man. And the way she did the ceremony was amazing. We did it outside. Mm -hmm. You know, you can hear nature. And it's in the park back here, like in the woods, where it's just, it's all nature. I didn't realize it was back there. Like, it's just all nature. You hear birds, you hear whatever. Crickets. Sex, crickets Yo, it's just beautiful, and. She did it underneath this tree. So the tree, she was sitting under the tree and we kind of outside of the tree. And we're in like a circle, you know. And, you know, we all had our little rugs we sitting on. And basically what rug. she... Rug or yoga mat. mat. Yeah, either it's, one. It's important. I, I just wanted to get... You can, you, can, you can use whatever you want not to sit on the grass. Or you can just sit on the grass. So, okay. Yeah. Even that too. Okay. Yeah. So we're in the circle and it starts off with talking and she hands out uh, the, she has cacao brewed. She makes it almost, it almost like a hot cocoa. Oh wow, okay. Hands out each cup. We all say who we are, introduce ourselves before we drink. And we talk about some things that we're looking to do with ourselves. And then we all sip together. Okay. And then you can drink it all, you can sip it as the ceremony goes. And then, you know, she goes into, you know, everything about cacao, where it comes from, ceremonial benefits, uh, the tribes that maybe used it, uh, her experience with it, and wow. she starts to sing. It's beautiful. She sings very nice. She, you know, uh, encourages us to sing along with her. It's my first time, so I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm uptight. But then I, I can feel myself start to be like, yeah, cacao, cacao. You know what I'm saying? Like she's singing the song and saying Love cacao. It. And I'm like, and then I realize, like, man, just sing, bro. Like, who cares? So I start singing. You know, not very loud. I'm like, you know, what I'm saying under my Kind of still under my breath singing. But got the bass coming. Yeah, got the bass. Everybody you know? got the right. <laughs> So that's the first part of the ceremony. And then uh, after we all consumed our cacao and we sang, she be, you know tells us to lay down. By the way, way, everybody has drink cacao? Like, you mean, so is everybody has drink? Everybody's drink, yeah. Okay. It wasn't just me. <laughs> <laughs> just in case, you know, they're thinking like, yo, does everybody need to drink this Yeah, cacao? everybody's drinking it. You don't have to drink it. Uh, you can also eat it in its raw form. I actually brought a raw cacao fruit to them that day. <laughs> oh, word. Yeah, because I like cacao too, even way before I did that ceremony. So I brought a, a cacao pod does, to them. By the way, does every sound bath have that cacao? No, 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 not for sound bath. No, this is just 
my experience with the sound bath was a part of a cacao ceremony. Oh, got you. Yeah. Okay. So I'm getting to the sound bath that portion right now. So right. we all drank the cacao, and then now we got to the sound bath portion. Where we laid down, and she had maybe like, man, what I can remember, there were like 15 different bowls. Big, small, boom, 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 and... Like in the line? Or they were like on a, they were on a table. Okay. And some of them were below, some of them was above. But what I didn't realize she was doing is, I don't know how she was holding them because my eyes were closed. Right. But she had... And then like, uh, yeah. what's that pose? Like, I don't know if it's... Lotus? Lotus? Yeah, I don't know what it's called either. If it's polit politically correct, you can't say Indian style anymore. I guess. <laughs> Indian style. Yeah, right? legs folded. Legs, legs crossed. folded. Yeah. So, I know I was not supposed to say it, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... We land down, eyes closed, and she's, I hear the bowls, and the vibration is very strong. Wow. And you can feel it. And you can almost feel when different bowls are being hit, and the, the sound radiates. I don't know how she was doing that, because again, my eyes were closed. So all I remember is seeing different colors. And it was, I got into a, 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 a state where you know, I forgot I was there. I was away, but I was aware. They call that astral projection. Yo, it was bananas. You astral projected. It astral. was, ban but, but the sound baths, the different frequencies of the different bowls being hit took me to different places, saw different colors. When every sound bath was hit, something different happened. And in your mind's eyes, saw the different colors. Yeah, my mind, so my eyes closed, yeah, I saw different colors. That's incredible. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's again, incredible. all this happened when my eyes are closed. Synesthesia. Dude. Yeah. I completely, yeah, I completely forgot I was outside in nature. Like, at that point, like, at that place. Because it's deaf and dull. Yeah. The insects, the birds, Yo, that, that sound bath them. was, you know, it's definitely, like, the, man, it's, it's incredible. And all we did was drink cacao. We ain't drink nothing hallucinogen or... Somebody gonna make a joke. Oh, what's she putting in that cacao? It's That's, like yeah, nah, all bro. our brothers and sisters yeah. right now looking at us like yeah, they put something in that Kool Aid. Yeah, no nah, man, I drank. Yeah. Malibu, they put something in that Kool Aid. <laughs> you, you sure sitting there? Yeah. And even so, even before that, like I would you know eat cacao and I would have a good amount of energy. I never knew it was the cacao though. But after learning more about it, I'm realizing oh, that's why I had all that energy because I was eating all that cacao in my shake or. You know, on top of my acai bowl, whatever the case is, right. or with my oatmeal, and I'll have all this energy. And I attribute it to the oatmeal when really it's the cacao. Wow. You know, but after I did that ceremony, she educated me on a lot of the benefits of cacao. Now I'm like, oh, now I understand. You know what's crazy, too? What's that? After our last episode, right, when you did the commercial for the Blue Stripes, yeah. right, we have a commercial, y'all see that. Um, I told my client that we were talking about cacao nibs, and she's like, yeah, it's my product. I, I do it all. I have it all the time. Yeah. And I was like, so you've been holding out on a source of minerals. Because yeah. like, I was like, I was bugging out. Like, yeah. just going over the list. I was like, that's all minerals, man. That's a great source. Yeah. Everybody's so focused on carbs, protein, and fats. But the vitamins and minerals, where's your sources outside of it being supplemented? Right. So you got your minerals, you got cacao nibs. And I was like, so impressed that you brought that to me. And she's like, I've been doing this forever. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I be tripping sometimes when my clients be doing things and they don't even know how beneficial it is. Really yeah, is we. I mean, yeah, we forget. And you know, the crazy thing is too, though, about that, it's extremely beneficial, and hopefully, they're not doing anything to negate those benefits. You know, by taking on a, a coach, yeah. you know, to help them with their lifestyle, I think they are doing the right things. You know, because. She checks in with me, literally. Like, I'm about to train her and her girls, you know? Hello. She's about five of them. And, nice. And I'm telling you, like, I already have, like, a system in mind of how I train squads anyway. Yeah. I call them a squad. A squad. <laughs> squad up. So, uh -huh. <laughs> so you know, uh, she is definitely choosing to do the right things Absolutely. after she eats something that's healthy. Like, I told her she had to cut rice if she really wants the abs. And she's like, yeah. we're going to cut the rice. You know, she, yeah. cried, she cried it through, but then it's like, all right, now she was, now she getting diced up. I don't got all that water from the carbohydrate. And she black too, so yeah. You know, she, she makes she makes but she she would rather have that said because I think for people who say like all right, you know, rice is not the actual thing. Yeah, it could be if you consume a lot of it, especially so white rice. 
white rice. So white rice has been known to have plastic in it, right? So mm -hmm. which is crazy. But wild rice is different. You familiar with the wild rice, right? Yes, the long, the longer grain. It takes a lot longer to digest. Yeah, even with the so. There's a wild black rice too. So what they try to do is they try to fool you and be like, all right, we got white rice, brown rice, and then black rice, right? And they try to say the brown and black rice are like better for you. Mm -hmm. Nah, man, that shit's just like white rice. When you want to get into the different rices, the ones that are beneficial mm -hmm. is the wild rices. The wild rices are nat more natural rices or natural rices. Got it. The other ones are just, I mean, Brown rice is just like white rice, which are just like the black rice that they make. But they try to make it seem like it's healthy because of the color. And they probably add something in there. I think, you know, because I, what I've noticed is like, you know, like there's a shell yeah. around the rice, right? Yeah. If it's brown, if it's black, there's a certain shell, which makes that tougher to digest in the system. So let's say when you eat it, right? Yeah. That uric acid that breaks it down it takes longer. Mm. But if you drop white rice in there, it fizzles right out and becomes sugar. Mm. So that coating is what's allowing it to uh, break down slower. It was what you want. Mm -hmm. It's where you get that satiating feel. Like yeah. remember I said, like leptin and ghrelin. Yeah. Well, that leptin <laughs> kicks in. I love using the word leptin. Y'all know. <laughs> yeah. It's like leptin iced tea, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Please, if y'all remember it that way, too, respect. <laughs> you know, you always say, remember, I'm satisfied. Yeah. When you hear that word leptin. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think that's why it's important. So, like you said, wild rice, I can see how that breaks down slower, too, yeah. digestively, and the other benefits that come from it. And you don't need to eat that much, either, though. That's another thing we got to regulate is portion control. That much? Yo. You know what? Last time you asked me, what is, like, the right amount to eat? Yeah. I let precision nutrition down, and I want to ask for your forgiveness, because I know better. Oh, why? Uh, the portion size for everybody, if you take your hand and cuff it together, yeah. that's your carbs, right? Yeah. If you look at your the size of your palm, hold on, hold on. that's your protein. Now, where did they get that from? This is Precision Nutrition. No, where did the Precision Nutrition get that from? Um, this is the portion of size that they figured out what worked. Yeah, but where did they get it from? Like, where did they... Studies, like, how did they fish? Because you got to remember they this. They teach a whole course on that. Oh, I know. I took it. Mm -hmm. I'm certified on both of them. Level one and two. But I always ask questions like, all right, cool. Did y'all, you know, y'all did the studies. All right, cool. So you did the studies, but what were the studies on the people's lives before they did the study with you? Mm. Because that's also what makes important. the huge part, right? You know what I'm saying? So if I'm somebody who's been eating terrible my whole life, and then I come and I get eat your portion size, it's going to look good for your study. You see what I'm saying? If I've been eating. So I would say this much to you. It would be on us. To do that research, yeah, I so mean, like for three months, we'll find like a few clients that who's down. Like, yeah. do what you do naturally. Don't let me give you no recommendation. Yeah. And then three months after that, let's go with the portion size that Precision Nutrition says, and let's look at the data. Yeah. That's on us to do. We yeah, can't. But we, but we would need like you know blood work and all that stuff too, though. You know what I'm saying? Again, it's, we have the it's funny, like the super size me for that. Y'all want to help yeah. fund us for that? Let's do let it. Let me down. You you seen Super Size Me the old movie? Oh yeah, yeah. My man was wrong for that. Yeah. I think he passed away. Isn't it? Like. I don't know. A few years after that, I heard I heard he passed away from that. I don't know. We gotta look if you're still up. alive, though, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, his, his girl was like, a, you know, I think she was like a health freak, and she like had him doing the cleanse and everything after that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, but yeah, that's my experience with sound baths. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Appreciate you sharing. I yeah. haven't, haven't done one, but I have a friend who uh, hosts them. I'd highly recommend it. Elmira, much love to you. Elmira? Elmira. Elmira? Yeah, she's a... Uh, Lebanese or something like that? Someone, nah, Bosnian. Bosnian, okay. Yeah, she would kick my ass right now. Like, <laughs> All right, so thank you guys for paying attention to us on what we're talking about here with recovery. We're talking about inactive recovery at this one. Our next episode will be talking about active recovery. So we addressed sleep and we addressed sound bath in this episode. So if there's any other ways that you do in inactive recovery, go ahead and put it in the comments. Mm -hmm. But um, I want to leave this last portion here to my man B. Dizzle. We'll give a <laughs> go ahead and leave us with something, brother. Believe half of what you hear, mm -hmm. none of what you see. None of what you see. None of what you see. Half what you hear, none of what you see. That's me.
appreciate that. That's actually some solid wisdom. You know, we got jokes, but he got wisdom too. So. That's an old saying, though. But you That's know what? Saying, it yeah. was so timely and needed to be said. And I want to yeah. support it. You know, yeah. um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, brother. All right. <laughs>